I don't have a lot to say about this painting, but I did use a different technique or experiment with a different technique when I started kind of trying to emulate like stuff water people who do like work with watercolor can do because I wanted to maintain my line work because within like my art style that's I can like really blow out the original like concept that I had in my mind. So I used glue, like just regular like Elmer's glitter glue because it was all I had. It didn't really go that well. It didn't peel off, so it added additional texture, but it did help me maintain like some of my lines that would normally be lost in translation. And it's kind of just like something I wanted to try with this particular art style. That's all about that. Um, the topic of this video is sort of gonna be like about my internal conflict and also I guess sort of my own inquisitive nature about like not just like artists but like creators in general which has sort of become like a theme within this that it's not like I don't feel like this is just limited to like visual artists I feel like it's pretty art field wide or like art subculture wide I guess and it's like I don't know like and like when I feel like did I say what I thought I said? Or is it in my head? I don't know. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, it's like, are artists out of touch within like the range of pricing? And it's not pandemic related. This is just something that I've always kind of felt within visual artists, especially. I think they're slightly more willing to talk about it because a lot of them have like channels, you know? And like art pricing is like a major there's like a lot of conflicting opinions, especially depending on like what medium of art, like how much is your art worth. And it's something that I have like, I I guess I have researched, but I don't really think it, it wasn't super expensive. I've just found like, you know, various like graphic design artists on Tumblr talking about things. And then I've seen fine artists talk about things. And then I've seen like, ugh, I hate to talk about it, but like, you know, like, kind of, like, some of those trashy gossip blogs or, like, lo locale forums and, like, whatever. Like, in, like, Reddit pages. I may be Reddit pages. I'm not sure. I haven't looked in Reddit pages. But I'm, there probably are. About, like, how crazy some artist pricing is for, like, the quality of work they do. And I'm, like, are they pricing it based off their experience? Are they pricing it based off of, like, like, it's just, like, it can, it's, like, across the board, though, like. I, are you comfortable charging like perhaps a, like a month I don't know how poor people are you know but like artists want to be making more than minimum wage off of their art because they are self-employed and like I said artists do wear all the hats but like are you are you being ridiculous like outrageous and like I've struggled with my own pricing some artists refuse to talk about pricing some artists act like they know everything and it's like oh you know you have to understand like surplus and demand and it's just like you, it's I don't know and it's like plus like it's hard to tell with like what you see on the internet are these people actually selling things you know and it, I don't know I think I've turned into rambling but like for me personally I like I would prefer to only sell my original art and not create art prints but that's also because I can't afford to create art prints that I think are like high quality I don't have like a printer or anybody to go to I know I think some people who have like large-scale paintings have like gallery connections and they have like like printers specially made for scanning large canvases or like wood panels I don't know how you do that my printer is very small and the whole like I was like yo you can do it square by square it's fucking ridiculous it's very time-consuming aligning like my type of art with like it's Oh, you want me to do this like squid? It's a puzzle. It's just it's it seems unreasonable. So I know that there are like Red Bubble and Society Six where you can post stuff and then it's put on stuff. But I personally don't really want my art on a mug, you know, or on a towel or a rug or a chair or a clock. Like I just would like you to buy this painting, you know. And that's kind of why like I struggle with pricing stuff because like I think currently I'm going sort of by inch with my pricing and I can't remember exactly what that formula was for that because I don't really update my shop on Etsy as often as I probably should but it's like nobody's buying anything so why should I lie to myself and you know 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not lying to yourself, but that's how I feel about it. It's like, ugh. This hurts me more than it inspires me and motivates me to post more. I mean, I paint every day. And that's the thing about this. Like, if you're doing your, like, art by hour, I'm not really keeping track. Like, before I started doing time-lapse videos, I didn't really know how much time I was spending painting or, like, per painting and what size of painting. But the more I paint, regardless of what size it is, I finish painting very quickly now. Like, literally painting every day I've been improved like I don't know like my not like improved like I've gotten better I mean maybe but more like I can paint like paintings that I'm proud of within six hours maybe less maybe five I think I found like points and within like I recognize that I think I'm overworking I'm over painting certain things but it's sort of just like sometimes I become like hyper focused on like colors and I want to see every color in like one part of a painting I don't know you see my art style you get what I'm talking about I guess maybe you do maybe you don't um but she's like I don't know it's a very weird thing you know like am I am I worth that much you know like I think within like tattoo artists like if you're a popular tattoo artist with a big following you can charge a ridiculous price you know but like a beginner tattoo artist probably couldn't charge and it's like Art is kind of considered a luxury, you know, which is how some artists would explain their prices. Or at least that's how I saw somebody on Tumblr. I think I've heard a couple other people say, like, art is not a necessity, it's a luxury. And if you're creating a luxury item, then you can ask people to pay a ridiculous price. And I've kind of looked through, like, what I think are kind of, like, popular or, like, what seem to be well-off artists on social media. And I've looked at their prices. Um, I guess somebody I can talk about who's kind of been on like pretty consistent on social media and seems to be relatively successful um I guess Charmaine Olivia you can talk about her she had her prices on some of like if you can find like a gallery set of older you can find her prices I don't know like how that works if like a gallery gets you know how that the, the actual amount that she's getting breakdown wise but um like with her like when they were held by galleries, then they were like $5,000, but then on her own site, the originals that were actual paintings were, I can't remember, I think they were like $1,000 each, but it's just like, is that enough to live off of? Is that, I don't know that she's a good person to go off of, because I've heard people speculate various things about her, you know, not to be gossipy, but they're like, she just seems wealthy. I'm like, I believe that, but I'm also from the Midwest, and I don't know anything about California. Um, another person, Audra Eclair, on her website where you see her originals that aren't done on oil or like, like, I don't, she has started doing more stuff with oil, I think. I don't know, I don't follow, I'm not on social media, kind of going off my last video, I've unfollowed, like, all the, most of the artists that I follow. I kind of think I only follow a couple of illustrators, but I found them way more recently than, like, I've been aware of, like, the art people. Audra Eclair, like I said, her originals that are like normally watercolor or like gouache. I think, I can't remember the pricing. I wanna say that they were like from the hunt, like from a hundred dollars. And I don't know if it's like a hundred Canadian dollars because she's Canadian or if it's like US dollars, but like a hundred dollars up. I think when she did her oil paintings, they were thousands, but I'm just like, I don't know. It's just like, I'm so conflicted about like what to do with myself. And I was like, so many people have so many different opinions and information about like pricing and it's like should you charge this for this should you go by square inch should you go by time should you go by skill because technically i've been painting if we're going by like time frame my art style has gone through i would say maybe three evolutions maybe four depending on how you count it from what it is now i would say i kind of go back and forth like yo-yo between styles but anyway time frame of which i've been painting i started painting in like 2010 probably 2010 which makes it seem like I've been painting for 10 years but I arrived at this art style in roughly 2015 2016 so that's a pretty good like five years <laughs> yes oh wow okay I see what I did there that's interesting um but yeah so I've roughly been painting for like five five years in this art style and it's still like changing and growing I'm still experimenting with things at least I think so you tell me I don't know but um so I'm like, I don't know how much that's worth. I'm self-taught. When I started painting in 2010, I was like 11 or 12. I think. Yeah, I was yeah, 10. I was 10. I was like 10. 
but when I was painting then was very different than what I'm painting now. So I'm like, how do you appraise that? And then there are other people who do like, you know, like, I feel like, I don't know how to say his name, Bao Fan. Like, what he does makes sense, you know? He does, like, really nice watercolor paintings that are very clean, and he can do, he sells them on Etsy. I bought one, so I know. But, um, like, it's just really high quality, so I'm like, it doesn't make sense for an artist like me to sell that type of thing, you know? Like, I, I don't know, like, I, I guess this was just a whole bunch of jumble about me being uncertain and me being confused. That's the same thing. Uncertainty and confusion. Wow. Um... So, it's just like, I don't know, like, is this a moral dilemma, you know? Like, there are tattoo artists in, like, is it by the longevity? Because there are artists that actually are honest and, like, I don't actually use that high quality of paint, you know? I think, um, like, they're like, I don't use high quality paint, but, like, I know how to ensure longevity through, like, glazing and stuff. So, it's just, like, it's a lot of personal preference and stuff. And it's just, like, there's so much conflicting information. And it's just something that I, myself, am very conflicted about. Because, like, do I consider what I make a luxury? I don't really think so. Um... And it's hard to find, like, for me in particular, like, my art style. Is my art style one of a kind, unique, unreplicatable? That's another way I think I've heard people phrase it, like, is this really one of a kind? Is this, like, a, a really unique skill? And it's just, like, I don't know. I don't know how I do this without, like, boosting myself. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I just kind of want other opinions about it. Like, is it unreasonable? Are, like, certain artists out of touch, regardless of the medium, whether they're painters or, like, like tattoo artists like I understand you're in you're like in demand you know but at the same time like this is like more than what some people make in a year on their arm you know because you're popping you know like there's waiting lists um I'm trying to think of other people I think well, it's very clear in the music industry because like anybody can make beats you know there's just I don't know is it pretentious am I gross <laughs> like, that's what I'm, I'm like I don't want to be yucky I don't, um, and I, I don't know, like, I, maybe I shouldn't talk about it, you know, but at the same time, it's something that's really, like, plagued my mind, because it's like, I have a shit ton of paintings, and I would say out of a lot of the paintings that I've done, I am proud of maybe, like, I would say, some, I, depending on what time I made them, like, are these my best work, can I ask that, like, you shouldn't price paintings based off of, like, favoritism like oh this is my favorite like emotional attachment to things so some people are like I do that I can do that 100% so it's just like I, mean, I don't want to just be making something up you know I think and I have I have technically sold three paintings but I really only count two and one I a sale I made with through Twitter which I was shook I was so shook I didn't believe her um I definitely feel like I undersold that painting and I spent quite a bit of money on shipping um, it's a learning curve, but, um, I think I priced it for 150 If I have a picture of the painting that I sold, because I kind of forgot that I ever made it, I'll post it here. But, I felt like I undersold that one, and then there was another painting that, based off the pricing of the first one, if you're going off of square inch, it was like 10, 11, 11 by 14, or something like that definitely underpriced um it was i sold that for a hundred dollars and then the other one that i sold was a 16 by 20 for 150 and i don't feel like that made any sense but i was like am i asking too much nobody knows who i am you know like do i have to wait till i'm known or it's like i don't know but it's like i've been painting for so long and it's like i paint every day i know i'm capable of producing up to two paintings a day depending on how I work and if I eat and if I take bathroom breaks or if I feel sick from my you know chronic illness but it's just like what, what there's no perfect math for it and it's just so fucking hard to figure you know like I don't want to feel like I'm taking advantage of people like wow I made so much money off of that because you know I, I like I believe I is there such a thing as an ethical, like, rich person? Not that you're, I mean, you probably could be rich, but you, whatever. 
you know, like, I don't have sponsors. I don't have jack shit, you know. Who the fuck am I to ask for so fucking much money, you know? Um, I just don't know. I'm uncomfortable with it. Anywho, that was, um, a ramble about that. Um, am I out of touch as an artist? Am I asking for too much money? Like, pricing art is so hard. Because I was like, there are artists I've, I'm back in it. There are artists I've seen that I feel like their work would be, like, worth a lot more. And then it's not. I feel like that about, like, Zeke lunch, Zeke's Lunchbox. I think her art is, like, very unique and very original. And I like how she uses colors and her creatures and stuff. But I'm just like... I don't know. And then it's like, who's popular? Who decides what's the good? You know, it's just all, it's just, what, who, how? You know, like, it hurts my brain. It hurts my brain. Um, anyway, feel free to like or dislike, subscribe or don't subscribe. Thank you for watching if you watched it to the end. Um, also, if you have an opinion that you would like to share on this, because I don't have any art friends, um, feel free to share them in the comments. You know, even if you're not an artist, like, how do you feel about it? What do you think? Is it too much?